Contacts between East Africa and the outside world up to 19th century. Introduction. Dr. Griffin has taken Luanda along with him to Mombasa for a museum tour. Luanda hopes they won't spend all their time inside buildings. Let us see how they are getting along. So this is the famous Mombasa? What's so special about it? I mean, besides these beaches with great water. Well, as a matter of fact, the deep harbors was exactly a reason foreign visitors came to the location starting in the 7th century. Wow, that long ago? Why do we know that? You see, Africa didn't develop a writing system until much later, compared to the Chinese and the Arabs. As a result, we have to rely on other documents, such as that of the international traders. This recorded information dates to the 600s. Oh, my friend Dr. Anderson and I discussed this. Oral tradition, or word of mouth, was the main information passer in Africa. I know Dr. Anderson. We studied in London together. Yes, there is little documented history before the international people came to the African coast in search for trade. Well, what sources do we have confirming this? Um, in about the 1st and the 2nd century, the ancient Greeks and Romans had ships that came down the Mediterranean Sea through the Arabian Sea around the Horn of Africa and to the northern coast of modern-day Tanzania. Is there a book or something? Yes, actually. The Periplus of the Erythrean Sea, which means to sail around the Indian Ocean. There's also a book called Geography, written a hundred years later in 150-ish by a man named Ptolemy. He even had a very crude map of the known world, although they had been lost. I see. It seems to be coming together that it really does help to have a written language to document such events as this. Hmm. What about the Arab books? You mentioned they had a writing system. Yes, the writings of Ibn Battuta provides one a description of the East African coast in his book. This guy traveled for almost 25 years from Morocco all the way to China. This was in the 14th century. Anything earlier? You said 7th century there were writing systems. Uh-huh. I did forget to mention Al-Masuri. He was alive in the 9th century and would travel around the world, including East Africa, exploring and mapping it out. He was from Baghdad in modern-day Iraq. So, these seem to be the Islamic scholars. What about any Christian travelers? They seem to have a stronger hold in Africa now. Yeah, there was an early Christian follower, though not Catholic. Cosmas Indicopletus was a merchant who greatly recorded his travels in India and detailed how the Persians controlled Indian Ocean trade. He knew firsthand what was going on since he did business. Meaning he made some coins in the process. Yes, coins. Coins as archaeological evidence have been found on the coast. Although money wasn't used here in Africa until later, other parts of the world were dealing with the money system. This and other random items can be found. I am guessing they must have done most of this travel by ships. Hmm. You mentioned something about deep harbors earlier. Yes, there were natural factors for the ships to be able to make it here. The harbors are deep and allow ships to anchor or pack around the coast. There are also very strong monsoon winds that make it easy to move quickly. And they did this in a luo canoe? No, boy. There were great advances in marine technology. What I mean is other civilizations were learning great boat-making skills for ocean travel. This, paired with skilled navigators and sailors, made ocean travel an adventure. And who is providing all the shillings for this? Good question. There were wealthy traders that were always looking for more items to trade and get rich. They basically financed or paid for the trips. 
And then people just stayed around here? Why? Same reason you wanted to come here. The climate was pleasant, and the locals were super welcoming to the newcomers. Karibu Kenya. Plus, the farming land was usable and open. Okay, so that is why they were able to come here. But why did they leave in the first place? Luanda, you are lucky I enjoy talking about this subject. Or else. Just answer, please. Be excited. I want to learn. Good point. Now, some push factors for people to leave home were that they were being persecuted or attacked for their religion, such as the Arabs or Persia. There was also some civil wars and fighting happening in Arabia locations, and people wanted to escape this as well. This may not be quite a push factor, but the new technology such as the Arab Dao or boat made it easier to explore. The wind pushed their boats? That's a push factor in my eyes. Thanks, Luanda. Now, for some pull factors. The want for exploration and traveling? Hey, that is a great guess. There was also a desire to get rich by coming here to trade with all the new items such as ivory. Which is why so many elephants have been killed in the past. Sadly, yes. Now, be quiet please. Almost done here. People wanted to spread their religion, such as Islam, to new places and also build up a new home, especially on the beach. So, these people, mm. are they the Greeks, Romans, Chinese, Persians and Arabs you keep mentioning? Yes, correct. But why? Oh, Luanda, come, let's go to the beach. I can discuss why and when each group came. It's better to know how we have been influenced in the past. All right, Twende.